but we want more guests and everything. So reach out to us. Yeah. Oh, man. So as I kind of preference this show with a little bit, uh, life has been life for us all, you know? Like, I think it fits in nicely with our topic here. You know, this yeah. thing called life. Why do some sink? And your favorite part here. And how do some keep pushing, pushing the stone? And I didn't plug that in. That's my original <laughs> point. Pushing that, the stone. That and either you shrink to your circumstance or rise to the occasion. That's my two taglines. I mean, and you know what's funny? I, ironically, you know, I laugh and joke about this, but me and Justin actually, it's like point. become a thing that we say now. It's like in our talk, this idea, like, keep pushing the stone. Because life is hard, and you know, you can choose, choose your heart every day, you know? And yeah, I think, man. uh, it, I think we're in this place now where everything seems hard, man. Like it, things are expensive. You know, people feel like they're not making enough money. Uh, relationships are tough. Um, it's problems with schooling, problems with the government. It's just so many things right now that I feel like are piling up for people. And I mean, you can kind of see it online and with people how, how people interact with each other. Uh, it's just life is hitting people hard. It is. It, it is. And it's definitely a tough time, man. But I, I just think it's, well, there's several components to it. Um, and how, how I came up with the topic, this thing called life. Actually, when I was in Mexico for my class reunion, that was the topic of my sermon. I did the Sunday service. Mm -hmm. And even before and after that, I was having conversations with people where there's so many people going through stuff that you don't even write, you know, people you know, every, you see every day. Just wear a mask because we train to wear a mask. But we train, but see, that's the problem though, yeah. because that's why the suicide rate is up. That's why, especially amongst African American males, our health is declining because we we think we just got to carry it. Um, perfect example, a uh, lady I see all the time. I saw, hey, what's going on? How you doing? She said, you just don't know my story. Thirty minutes later, <laughs> I you got the story. talking to it. <laughs> um, and you know, so but that's the norm now. Um, you know, my clients in Famcom. Probably two thirds of my clients are um, individuals in rehab, rehabilitation centers. Mm -hmm. They live there, shelters, and the age is like 30, 40, 50, 60 now. So I got a question. They're not for young you. people. These are people who drugs or alcohol was an escape. Do you think that like life appears to be harder now than any other point in time? Because I, I mean, some days I feel like that. Like it's just like it's always constantly something like that just is kind of a, a pain for people you know whether it's like again politically like you can look and see what's going on that's a a circus uh then we have you know things that are going on overseas and you know that certainly impacts us as well to kind of see that so i just like you know you see chaos around a lot more frequently than i think i may have noticed you know previously years before but i think it depends on your lifetime and what i mean by that is i'm sure african americans who grew up during the Vietnam era, mm. saw war. They were dealing with the civil rights, <laughs> lower wages jobs. I'm they, sure they, they wouldn't They didn't have TikTok and Instagram. But, so like, but, you're not seeing so, videos 24-7. Well, but but, but like, that's why I said it. But, but, it's all, but it's all in perspective, though, because they saw what they were dealing with a lot of civil rights stuff that we don't deal with today. So I think it's in perspective. I think, you know, um, it's easy to say it's tougher. Now, from my perspective, it's tougher now than what I went through when I was growing up, I think in between, because I didn't have that. And I didn't, you know, this is different for me now. But I think some would say is all in perspective of where you the generation you grew up in. But I'm sure if you ask somebody that's going through stuff right now, they'll tell you it's, it's, it's hard. Time. Yeah, they'll tell you that. <laughs> they'll tell you that. It's the toughest time ever. I mean, but again, I, I think the reason why yeah. I, I think it's a little bit different nowadays compared to like in the past is because it's in your face 24 seven, like everything, the news cycle of just yeah. constant, constant, this constant war, there's constant no politics, constant. Yeah. It's never a break. It's, it's murder here. Murder but that's here, about right? choice though, because you don't have to watch that stuff all the time. I hear you and I, I agree with you, but you also have to make a conscious choice that like when I get up in the morning, I'm not watching the news. That, that's, just, that's very personal. I, I'm not, I, but I'm just saying, like, but, but you, no, but it's not personal. But, but, but that you have to make it personal. You're talking about your well being, and you talk is if, if I'm having a tough time, I'm not going to hang around a bunch of people that's going to have this. I'm going to host a pity party for. So it is personal, but you have to make personal choices to help you 
alleviate some of the toughness, to help it not be so tough, to change your perspective yeah. of the tough times. Some people don't even realize it, though. I agree. Like, you know, the, the stuff that they're putting into them is certainly impacting I agree. how they move forward and pursue things in life. And choices they make that may contribute. But, I mean, but the drop out of life, and, and that's basically what this is about. This is about people who, who decide that I just I give up. I, and, 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 and I give up three ways. I give up. I mean, we know the suicide way, but there are some people who just decided I'm I'm, I'm not going to try any harder. The hand I got right now, I'm just going to play out. I may not have everything I want. I may just be just getting by, but you know what? I surrender. You know, life is one. I'm not going to fight anymore. This is just the life I'm going to live. What's wrong with that for them? And, well, because <laughs> you're never happy because they're not happy. Just because you give in does not mean you're happy. That means you say, okay, I'm okay with being unhappy. So it's not about everybody has to figure it out, but there's a lot of people who are unhappy when you talk to people and you get in these conversations, man. They don't do anything, but they're not happy where they are. And so I go back to some of my clients. Well, that's insanity on you to sit here and talk about how un- unhappy you are, but you're not actively doing anything. But if you give up, no, but if you give up, that's what happens. People who yeah. give up, typically, that's what happens. They just settle in and it becomes, at least I'm not as bad as this person. At least I'm not bad as this person. Or it could always be worse. So they give up and surrender. There's people who become homeless not because they just give up. I'm tired of fighting. I'm just not going to deal with the pressure anymore. Um, you know, when I talk to some of my the clients. The part, too, is like I said this before, and I heard this from like yeah. Jim Rohn. It's like choosing yeah. your own heart. And it's like being homeless is just as hard as like working and getting a job. Like no. It finding depends, somewhere but, to stay. But it depends yeah, like on who you are. More, because some people, to eat. Like but, but some people figure the grind of, of trying to pay my bills is always a struggle. Yeah. You know, the pressure of trying to take care of this and take care of that. So. You know, again, it's personal because people we have our own mechanisms. But there's a lot of people who who are just surviving. You would never know, and they're not happy. You know, when you really get them in a deep conversation, they're not happy. They're just getting by, and and they're they're living a mediocre life that they don't like. But I give up. I'm tired of fighting back. I can't fight no more. You know, um, whether it's my marriage, whether it's my job, no way out. Yeah, so so like so, and this is but and this is but well, then the, my question the is: I asked people today, and somebody told me they said, "Well, my pride and ego would never allow me to quit." You know, that's that's that. She said, "My pride and ego will never gonna allow me to stop trying to be the best version of me, not in a a um, a, 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 a braggadocious or arrogant kind of way." Yeah. But I just have this expectation for my life. You know, um, and you know, adversity. There are some people who think, well, and and maybe this is all I'm meant to have. So I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm just going to surrender, you know. And this thing called I life look is at this thing where everybody can't be great. <laughs> no, you know? no, but see, that's not true. It's not about being great. It's about being the best version of you and, some and quitting life. Same. Everybody, everybody can be the best version of themselves, Chris. It's about being great. It's about saying that you and know some what? Some people ain't got it. Yeah, you but that, that's why we're talking about this topic. It's not that they don't have it. No, I go back to you. You choose not to use it. I think we all have the ability to, to, to do more than just survive. It, it's the question of how much you want to fight. I mean, you how much is it worth you to have a different lifestyle? As a manager, like you had some employees <laughs> that, you know, don't live up to expectations yeah. all the time. Like you can lay out perfectly for them what they need to do, expectations, like give them a perfect roadmap, and they won't do it. Like it's just like it's in, it's like for some people they just can't perform. Yeah. They don't perform. So I, I don't know. It's like but I they choose it. not to perform. Or, or, see, I always some say, people choose, and some people they just. I yeah, see, you know, some people they just like they, they don't got it. it. Yeah, but they don't try. <laughs> Even from a sports perspective that, but, too, like but, but you know, that doesn't mean you can't try. It. it doesn't mean you can't try. You know, yeah. you may not be good in sports, but you don't have to go out there and just stand there with your thumb in your I, mouth either. I mean, it's kids like that. It's people yeah, but, but just but lazy. They like, you know what I mean? But that's like, different, bro. though. That's different from saying I don't have it to. I'm just lazy. And the point I'm making is that I why mean, is it so easy to? Is a question and like me, I hate fail. You know, you I hate failing. I hate losing. I'm really close. And and I have a staff member right now, employee who I'm working with. We talked about trying to get him to the next level, but in my mind. In my mind, is more difficult because he's okay where he is. I know I'm not in a great place, but it could be worse. Appears to be the mentality. That's what I don't understand. How could you just say, "Okay, I'm living a miserable life, but this is all I'm. This is all you know. I, I really think I'm deserved." Now I know the low self esteem, but that's a whole different show. But that's what I'm talking about. How is so many people walk around every day and they just surrender? I give up. 
I'm not even gonna fight anymore. You know, my relationship sucks, my job sucks, everything sucks. I, cause, I mean, again, I think it's a not wanting to put in the no, work. I just feel like it's di- like, especially with that person you were talking about. I feel like in that scenario, you can't want you know more for that person than they want for themselves. I agree. Like, I, I that's not how it feels like sometimes it's like it's people who just they don't necessarily want it. And then I think in our position sometimes, like I was saying, is management. It's like you want more out of them than they're even willing to give or want from themselves. So it's like how. And why? That's not necessarily our problem, right? I guess that's they, they're comfortable with that. Well, see, this is we disagree. They're comfortable. And I was that. having this conversation with somebody today. We were talking, and 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 I, what I said to them was, I'm torn, you know, because the manager in me, the HR person in me, wants to say, "See you later. You're done. <laughs> you, you're, you know, this just ain't working out. We got to do." But hold up. The, the Christian in me is saying, okay, maybe I can coach this guy, work on this guy, and help him get better. And then the black man in me is saying, because he's a brother, that I, I can at least give him a helping hand and give him a chance. You know, maybe, you know, he'll get better. If not, if he fails, he's going to fail on his own. So I'm like stuck in those three things. The I, HR I'm, part of me is like, I'm stuck in those three things. things. Yeah, but then, <laughs> and I do agree, but then it's like, then am, am I giving up on him? You know, and and then again, and that's that's me. This is my perspective. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't sit here and say, well, why are people quitting when I'm not going. To, I'm not not just not. I'm not saying risk losing your job or, or, or putting out an inferior product. But can I coach him? Can I help make him better? Can I help make him realize that you know what? Some of the choices you make in life right now are leading to the situation you're in. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's like you're not going to get. It's funny because I was cracking up. Mike Tyson had me rolling this morning. <laughs> they were they were talking to him right. And um, they were playing this interview. And in the interview, they asked him, he said, you know, everybody's afraid of you. So he said, no, that's not true. There's two people not afraid of me. He says, my daughter. Because mm-hmm. one time I used the B word, and she went off on me. You know? And he said, my wife. He said, matter of fact, I was laying in bed talking to my wife this morning. And I was talking about how, you know, um, some, some fight, this guy's no way this guy can win. No way this guy can win. You know, she said, well. He said, you throw Buster Douglas wasn't going to beat you either. I thought that was so hilarious that his own wife said this to Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he was laughing, but but only she could say that. Then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody else here? Yeah. It, so, 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 and that, but he's the perfect example of somebody who just would not quit. Even though he failed numerous times, what he was or what he thought he was going to be is not who he is now, but this dude is still living his best life. But you know, it's funny even when we mention him and probably even for ourselves, yeah. like we were athletes. They got exactly. different mentalities and like we just some do. wired differently. And yes, yeah, some do, not all. We'll say that. But I, again, I, I just, we got a, a great comment in here. Like some people are just spectators. Like they, they're comfortable with I just guess, but why? I just I don't through. understand yeah, the why. It's tough I'm not for us disagreeing to with you. I don't understand the why. I, I don't understand it either. Because I, mean, I mean, we want too much out of life. To, you say you you don't like failure. I feel like that's a huge reason why is people fail one time. And they're scared to keep pushing. To keep pushing. They don't want to yeah, have that feeling ever again. But how do you not think about the generational impact? And again, you know, I, you know, I'm. I listened to a lot of Kobe Bryant stuff, and he said something today that I thought was, you know, not he didn't actually say it today. But he, you know, I want to make sure that clear. So people think I'm not talking to them. Yeah, he's but, lying. But, <laughs> but, but he made a comment about something. And, you know, the guy asked me, he says, well, what was your first impressions of the NBA? And he said, it was like, he said, he said, I thought it was like taking candy from a baby. The guy was like, what are you talking about? He says, because when you play in high school, you know, high school, he didn't play in college, even college. Guys are hungry. They give them everything they had. He said, about two thirds of the NBA. They're no longer hungry because they were playing for financial freedom, and now they have financial freedom, so they don't get any better. Yeah. He said, "Now I know why Michael Jordan was winning all those championships because mm-hmm. he was he was the hungriest guy in the league." Mm-hmm. And I think that's the same thing in life, man. Unless you stay hungry, you know, and, and constantly be pursuing something, you do fall into that role. And I don't, and like me, I could never be hanging around people and they're successful, and I'm not even trying. I don't. That don't. That wouldn't work for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's the thing too. It's a bunch of people want without putting <coughs> the work. Yeah, they just kind of think or expect it to happen. And to Devin's point, too, what he was saying in terms of, like, people give something a little bit of effort, and once they fail or hit this wall, it's just like, all right, I'm done. And I, it, that's just kind of the the rap form. Like, they don't necessarily... But I, but I, but I don't understand. And now, again, I feel like, I don't know. We, but let me go back to some of my clients. Like, I don't understand it either. And I and I asked them the question. And I didn't do the work from me. I asked them the same question. Okay. You drink alcohol, whatever. Why? 
oh, well, man, it helps me escape. It takes you to, okay. But it, first of all, it doesn't really help you escape. It just helps you kind of stay ahead of something temporarily. Mm. In a minute, whatever your source of escape is wears off, you're right back in the same place. So you don't really escape. You just run out in front of it a little bit, and it catches up to you. So, so why? That same energy and effort you're putting into that, why wouldn't you put in a change in your life? You know, it's funny. Like you Make better choices. Justin and I had a conversation today, kind of similar to that. We were just saying how, uh, like, yeah, as a people sometimes, we'll very easily go in on bottle service or a table or something like that, but we won't invest in a proper, a, yeah, a proper yeah, or potential yeah. business or something like that, you know, <laughs> something that can generate some passive income. Um, again, I think it's just the mentality and mindset of, like, just, Nobody, not everyone's wired to thinking. But that's a different show. That's and a lot of that is because of really lack of trust. We don't, we don't. When you're talking about investments and stuff like that, we don't, we don't have a lot of faith in things that don't give us instant gratification or instant return. You know, and investments don't do that. You know, a bottle or a table, you got to <laughs> you see, you see your return right away. But you know what? That's very similar to yeah. the topic that we're having right now, and why probably people don't necessarily pursue. You know things that are so great is because it's going to take time and it's going to take a ton of investment, whether it's money or just, again, like I said, your time and you might not yield or see the benefits for a while. Not everybody's willing to, yeah, to take that journey or that ride. But the greatest, the greatest return that you have on things in life is never on something that you get instant gratification on. If, if, if you want to have children, you know, you have to go through the act and it take nine months. The kids don't pop out the minute you decide to have children. If, if you in the if you plant in the garden, when you plant the seeds, the stuff just don't start growing the next day. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing you do that you get instant. It, it just doesn't work like that. That's sustainable. That's, that's, that's sustainable. So, so thing right now is it's kind of starting to be built towards instant. that. Yeah, but, but what what quick, what, is it that, that's just, what what is it that that you can be successful? But you can't do instantly. You know, um. Other than maybe hitting the lottery or something like that, that's not even an instant because you got to wait when the minute you buy the, from the time you buy the ticket, you got to wait for all it to take place. Yeah. So, so, and, and then is it sustainable? And it's like when you get high on drugs and alcohol, that's not sustainable. That's when you become an addict or alcoholic because you you got to keep doing it free, more frequent, more frequent, more frequent, more frequent. That that's not sustainable. So, and and I grew up in the hood. Mm-hmm. Um, I love my neighborhood, and I say that with great, and you know, I say that with great pride. But I also knew I was I didn't want to stay there. You know, I also knew I didn't want to raise my family there. You know, I never had aspirations at that point of doing some of the things I'm doing, but I knew what I had wasn't, and I didn't have a bad life for mom and dad, make sure we had various things, but I knew it, I wanted more than that. So that's, and I know what you want to say, that's part of my problem because I look at people, how do you not want more than what you have? Especially when you look around and other people are getting more than what you have. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I said that people do want it. They just don't want to put no work in for it. Or they but want it to be see- overnight quick success. I think a good thing is like, look at all of our kids just want to be rappers or entertainers and but, but influencers I, because they think it's just But quick, I disagree. Easy. I think there's a population who don't want it. It's not even about the work. They don't, they just don't, they just give up. It ain't just about the work. It's like, you know, it's, it's I think some of what you said before, you and Devin said it, maybe I'm tired of getting knocked down you know, maybe I hear all the stories of people not making it. I don't want to try, but it's not even about the work. Some people just, you know, they just give up. I surrender. I'm not even going, you know, I'm not even going to try. You know, I'll talk a good talk because I'll talk about, yeah, what I could do if I had a break, if it wasn't for the man, if it wasn't for this, you know, if, if Venus didn't pass Mars at 1230 in the morning, they give you all these excuses. It's but it's just, yeah, but I, I don't get how you just give up on life. How you just say, okay, you wake up one day and say, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life being mediocre. Do you think they feel like they gave up? Yeah, yeah. Or do you, they you feel like that's their peak? <laughs> like, now oh, that you that. that may be true, but yeah. you you can tell in a voice, you can tell in a demeanor, you can tell when they talk about things. They know they quit. They know they quit. Now they might not to your point. They give you a bunch of crazy reasons. Mm-hmm. Well, life don't get no better. This is good as it gets. But you can tell when you talk to people. Like I was having a conversation today about the show. Mm-hmm. And purposely, I had somebody in the conversation who I felt like surrendered, and I was waiting to get some input. You know, and they, they says, "Well, lack of motivation." You know, yeah, but but you know, what motivates you? You know, like I like to eat and live indoors. <laughs> it costs money. I got to go to work every and day. Some people, so, well, when you say eating living doors, I'm okay with going to McDonald's, and I'm okay with Wendy's, and I okay in my apartment. And, and I, I, but but <laughs> you're not really okay because you want other things. You settle for that. 
And I'm not saying that's wrong. Uh, I'm just saying, how do you go through life and be a, a lifelong underachiever? How do you go through life talking about what some else has and you just sit back and you don't even try? And all the things you say could be absolutely right. I still don't understand. I, you know, like you can't be, you know, come on, man, you're 40 years old and you complain that something happened when you were 12. Come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> I get it. I understand trauma. I'm not making fun of it. But at what point do you realize I'm responsible for my life? At what point do you realize that decisions I make now are going to determine how I end up, not something that somebody did to me 40 years ago? Yeah. At what point do you say, I was talking to a client yesterday and he was talking about his divorce and all these things. So I just asked him two questions. My first question is, I said, does your ex-wife feel the same way you feel? What do you mean? Is she walk around him more and complaining? He said, no. Okay, that's my first one. Okay, so she's living a life. When did you make a decision? You sit and complain about all the stuff she did. You're not together anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point you've got to let it go and move on. The next question I asked was, are you happy in your current state? No. Why? Because of my ex-wife. That's my point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like kind of crazy. I was just even thinking about this, too. I'm just like, I'm okay with some people that want to be mediocre. You know, we need employees. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, and, and, and I hear you. And, 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 and this is what's different because I think more um, is like when I was talking about the guy. I think more, you know, I don't, you know me, I don't believe in giving up on people. Now, some people will get to a point where they give up on themselves. But I think you give everybody without hurting yourself. You know, without doing crazy stuff to yourself, mm-hmm. I think, especially when you're talking about when I hear people say about the black race this, the black race that, and I think a lot of times we give up on each other. In some cases, too soon. In some yeah. cases, verbally. So I feel like you know, I think it's my obligation, my responsibility to bring people along. So I look at little different. I do, mm-hmm. I, you know, and and so I just get frustrated. And your your mom tells me the same thing. I get frustrated because I don't understand how somebody wants to, how they just want to settle and then talk about you like you did something miraculous, <laughs> you know, or talk about you like you sold out because you made better choices. Or you worked a little bit harder, you know, like you make sure you put yourself in positions to like, you know, to have. But they never, to your point, they never you. see that though. To your point, they never see. It's like people used to always say, oh man, you know, they used to walk and they don't say it anymore. Man, I'd be better if I had the hand you had. So I started saying yeah. was, you 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 can have a hand I had if you did the work I did to get that hand. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, that's what is difficult and challenging for yeah. people right now in life is certainly like looking over and seeing the next man's hand or like seeing what's online, seeing this person took this trip, this person mm-hmm. buying this car. This person's doing that. And like, I don't know, some people don't even necessarily see behind the curtain necessarily. They just think it's supposed to happen. Or in your case, like you just got lucky or like, you know, it was just the cards that you were yeah. dealt versus where it, it takes work and it takes consistency and like doing but, things that not everybody's going to do. But the first thing starts with a mindset or mentality. Yeah. If you have a mentality that it was funny because my college coach used to say this to us all the time. He would say. Some of y'all in this room will never be any better. And he would say, let me tell you why. Because you have mediocre practice habits. He says, so this is what's going to happen. He says, you will have a mediocre college career. You will have a mediocre education. <laughs> you're going to graduate. You're going to marry a mediocre woman. You're going to live in a mediocre house and drive a mediocre car. Wow. <laughs> he said, that's going to be your college coach is sad. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this is one of the greatest motivational speeches. <laughs> this is one of the greatest <laughs> motivational speeches. But I got what he was saying. You know, he was trying to tell us, you get out of life what you put in the life. Yes. He, you know, he kind of went a long way around it. But it was funny because I'm thinking, like, this is not the motivational speech I thought I was going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? But he, and he would say that, though, because there were people on the team who would do just enough. And I go back to what Kobe Bryant said when he said, hey, he said, you know, and Charles Barkley said the same thing. Something. Everybody great when they get to the NBA. It's just that some folk don't put the work in because they're not hungry anymore. Because they got that to first check. great or yeah. get better. They got that first check. You know, or, or their goals are different. He said, my goal is to win as many championships as I could get. Yeah. Some guys want to win MVP. Some guys want to win a scoring title. You know, they want to do, you know, he says, yeah, but he said, but that's not what the game was about. And he said something that was crazy to your point. He says, because they said, well, what made you great? He said, because not only did I love the game, he said, I love the sound of the ball going through the net. I love the sound of the ball bouncing on the floor. He said, I love the sound, you know, of, of the ball when somebody blocks a shot. He just he said, I loved every aspect of the game. And he said the difference with him and most other players, him and Mike had this in common was he said, you know, when everybody else was trying to find time to do other stuff, yo, basketball was the first thing for him. 
was the first thing for him. And um, a guy was telling a story. He said he, they were playing. Um, they were playing the Lakers, and he decided to go to the arena. You know, um, this was Lakers with Shaq and Kobe. He said, "I'm gonna go to the arena. You know, in the morning, nine o'clock, and I'm gonna shoot around." So I get the Kobe's already there working up a sweat. So he said, "I'm put up 400 shots. I was there for over an hour and a half, man. I'm sitting down tired, and Kobe's still there." So he said, I'm trying to figure out. So he said, I stayed another 25 minutes thinking he was going to finish. He said, nah. He said, so they go back and play. He said, go back, sleep, come back, and Kobe drops 40 on him. So he had to go ask him, like, yo, dude, why were you still there? <laughs> he said, because I wanted you to know you would never outwork me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, again, like, the, it's, I'm happy you're telling that story because it's a mentality, you know, like that some people had. Not everybody's going to be Kobe Bryant, but like you know, some people do have a similar mentality or more. But if you aspire to be, but that's you disappoint. If you aspire to be, you got to have those habits. Not everybody. Has How it. would you even instill that in people? Though, you know? Like for instance, sorry, think about just again NBA comparisons. You. It's people okay. that just want to get to the like they. They yeah, just want to get Kobe to the NBA. Talking, mm-hmm. That was Kobe was talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, even more so nowadays, like, because you got your guys like your Ben Simmons and, like, other players. He's like, they, a great year this year. Yeah, of course, because now <laughs> people have been talking about him so much. But you know what I mean? Double-double like, machine. But it's, like, guys that they just – they don't take it as serious as they used to. They don't have the same but, commitment but, to but it. He, it's but, really they – And I get it. But, they just but, there but to be there. we're talking about life. We're not just – you know, and I, I – and I agree with you, but we're talking about life, man. I, I, and I guess this is where we're different. Like, like they reached their pinnacle. I think life is so precious. That's their pinnacle. I think life is so precious, man. That, that, and and it's also the thing that as long as we get up every day, we have another opportunity. You know, that's how I feel about it. And we all know people who die. We all know people who get killed. To your point, people watch the news and everything. So how do we just? How do you just make a decision? I'm just gonna waste my life. You see it. How do you make a decision that you know what? This is it. To your point. Don't know to your better. point. I'm just, you know, I just give up. So people don't know. Yeah, but ignorance ain't bliss. And, and I, I don't I don't buy that you don't know. If you lived in a world where no boss was successful, then you can tell me you don't know. Like, yeah, like but that. but you, you we all know somebody who's who who's 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 killing it. If you like I mean some people don't though. Like if you grew up in the inner city, like you you're saying that they all they have access to I grew up in the city. I yeah, saw people who were killing it. About kids now, now. But kids now, there's people who kill it. Everybody in the city ain't doing I'm not business. saying everybody, but I'm but saying there's but some. you see one or two people as a teacher or something, you do see some examples of people who kill it. A teacher. Now I get it. It may not be in your house, but you see some. Yeah, you see teachers who run businesses. Who I'm not saying that they're not killing. I'm just you, saying like. But I'm saying you still don't respect teachers. Ain't respect teachers. Nah, but see, but, but see, there's, that's another misnomer. Some kids don't, but there's some kids the teachers only roll out they have. Sure. There's kids, and, and, you know, there, there there's are those kids who, who out there. yeah, who, who, who or, or that's the only positive role model they have. So I get what you're saying. But the thing that I, I want to go back to what I'm saying, when you give up on life, it's generational. It's not just about you. And that's actually probably maybe a, a point, too. Like when we're talking about the kids, it's like, uh, you know, the, the people around them that have given up on life. Like if you're being raised by a parent or generations yeah. of parents who they just doing the bare minimum like that's that's all you know is bare minimum to an extent i agree with you but at some point at some point you just like you you went you went out and found your way you didn't just say okay well i'm just going to settle for what i got from my dad i got from my mom you went out and found your way and found something different you know we all have that gift that's the one gift we all have is the ability to do that i'm a now, no we choose not to do it and, and I get back to the point is how do you choose not to do it? I'm not saying everybody's not going to be rich. Everybody's not going to be an entrepreneur. So I, I'm not saying that. But everybody has a gift of giving an effort. Everybody has a gift of, of being more than mediocre. And I mean being the best version of themselves, not comparing myself to you or you, but being how would I be? And I, I, that's what I tell you know, when I'm talking to people. Young, old, whatever you are, you need to be the best version of you. Forget it about Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Mm-hmm. Be the best version of you. And if you can do that, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish. Yeah. You'd be I, surprised. I, I agree with that about being the best version of you. I think uh, a lot of times, you know, we I do always come back to this, like the, the social media. And you say, don't watch it. Don't look at it. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> I said, but when you, you, if you, if you, if you, if like I'm working, but, with, like, if I'm working with a client and they tell me they're depressed. Okay, tell me about your day. Well, I get up in the morning. I'm on social media. I'm watching the news. Yeah, you if you depress, you feeding it. Yeah. I'm not saying don't look at it, but that can't be your 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 
everyday thing, all day thing, you're supposed to be working and you on social media. And then the other part about it, I did a workshop over the summer and this this paralegal say how she had to get off because she was going through a messy divorce and she's so busy on social media. Everybody's talking about how great their marriage is. She felt bad. Then come to find out the people that she knew in it, they were lying. That's but social she media. was so, but she was so engulfed in it and she's That's an intelligent social. person. So 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 we gotta, you know, you know, I'm not saying don't do it, but you gotta have a healthy balance, man. Yeah. That can't be where you get your news from. That can't be how, uh, you stuff know. like that invades other spaces. Like, I'll be watching ESPN yeah. and they're all of a sudden talking about Palestine. Right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, stuff, you, know? you, you can't get away. You're walking through the mall all of a sudden. But, but that's them. one thing, then you sitting there watching it 24 7. <laughs> that, that's you that's you right i get it that's coming in because that's new but that's one thing you get up in the morning and you checking your phone for the nonsense then you turn the news on and you and you're watching the murder mayhem and look how you starting your day out yeah. i mean and you whatever you feed grows stronger and this goes it's back such to what a we're big talking part about. of our lives though like it's hard to ignore yeah but anything mm-hmm. you do anything you do anything you do that controls your emotions now controls you all right that's just the bottom line if, if, if anything, so then you need to cut it out. It's like when I and, and people know me, I used to drink and try to take a tablet from Mac. I, no, but you can, nice. you can. He's we like, can ah. no, 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 that's not true. Because I read a book with him another night. There, y'all give it He's a grandpa. Read, so we read a book to him. We play, and he has a balance. He has a balance. He yeah, he likes it. He does educational stuff, but he I can take it. We Maybe can I talk. shouldn't use him. We, but there's we, kids out there. That yeah. use and I told your mom I felt bad Tantrums. because I said the team with him on on Saturday night and had a better conversation when I had to do work for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he was like he he, he yeah. almost he was like Grandpa, what you doing? So I I was doing something with some resumes and he started to write on one. I said Mackenzie, please don't do that. That's important. He says it's important. It's important. He says can I have another piece of paper. I mean, he's so at four years old. I had great conversations with him. Yeah. So, 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 but the point I'm making is, you know, how do we, how, how, I don't get it. And how do we break it? Because we're on the second half. How do we begin to change that mentality? Because not only is it generational, it can become cultural because it's spreading. It become like I have to catch myself because I used to say a, a generation, but now it's not. Is you're talking about people young, old, and different. It's it's, it's changing, man, and, and more and more people just decide that medi- mediocrity is okay. I mean, well, they mediocre. Well, I'm all right with that because I think there's just like a, there's an idea sometimes that we kind of even like put people in boxes of being, hmm. like that. This is, this is just ceiling anyway. You know what I mean? Like it's that's what people say to kids at a certain level. Like, hey, you can't read and write, or right, you're probably gonna go to prison at this point in time. Oh, well, you you can't do this. No, you, no seriously. But no, I won't even laugh because you were defending that before, but huh? a couple shows ago, you were like, how Yeah, to, that's right. How to defend what? <laughs> when I was saying to tell what the percentage of people becomes education, I know. You was like, Yeah, that's right. But I'm just saying, <laughs> but like, can you imagine if you're when you're actually Saying that I was there, you, I had when, it said to me when, when I grew it, up in the era when they said they used to tell us all to stand up, all the boys used to tell us all to stand up, and you stand up and count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all the three step forward, one out three, y'all gonna go to prison. That was the step, yeah. That or like, mm-hmm. right, was, that was the step. This many of y'all gonna die by this, age. one to three, like, one out three. A, so it's like definitely, I think that certainly impacts like where people see themselves going. Like it was, I remember it was a point in time where people used to celebrate uh, tw- 21, 25. Never thought they I was going to make a deal. You, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Up. But it's just like. Although 18, too. <laughs> that's, and it's getting younger. Yeah, yeah, it's getting younger. But again, that certainly impacts like where people kind of see themselves or like uh, the effort that they even put into life. It's like if you're in this space of where like I don't think I'm going to make it past this point, then. Ben Poor done it. Don't like it. Yeah, grew up wearing hand me downs, but hand me downs for y'all don't know where you got your your, uh, your older sibling clothes and to you know been there done it. Man. I was a big sibling, and, you know. Um, there's just so many things that I experienced growing up. No complaints because it made me who I am, but I, I wouldn't want for you, and I wouldn't want to relive it. Mm-hmm. So, so I would never get to the point where I think that's okay. You know, I love my neighborhood. Nothing against my neighborhood, man. But but guess what? I also understood that it wasn't perfect. It wasn't the best place to raise a family. You know, I knew if I stayed in the same environment doing the same stuff, I would have got what everybody around me got. It wouldn't have been different. I could have fooled myself and told all the crap, all the smack I wanted to tell myself, oh, yeah, but if you do what everybody else does, you get what everybody else gets. That's just, that's the formula. 
that don't change. So I guess to the point though is like, how do we change the mentality or the mindset? Each one, have, each one, and that's what I said about. Like especially when we talk about it's a generational thing. Each one, each one, and that's what I said about how. Like, who's I, that gift? Yeah, who's that gift? I'm, that I'm, I'm stuck with the dilemma. <laughs> I'm stuck with the dilemma about how you know. Yeah, because I think you can only do. I mean, I'm I'm blessed and fortunate that I do get to speak to audiences and I get to work, but most people have the opportunity with one person. So so you start with that one because if I get one person now, when he gets married, hopefully, preferably, he takes that into his family. So now he's raising his kids and what I gave him. So, so this is a long game. Yeah, it's a long game. It's, it's definitely a long game. It's the, we got here in a long you game. Know. This wasn't no quick. We didn't I get mean, overnight. That was part of the point that we made earlier. People don't like the long game. Hey, what, yeah, but you, what, what you're talking <laughs> about. Wait. But the people that's in the game don't realize it's a long game because you're getting yourself together. Them time you have kids, you pouring into them. Your kids don't know it's a long game. You know, your kids, don't. they don't know that, that you know, how much time you may have wasted or what you have done, but it has to start somewhere. Yeah. And, and I get you. That's the problem because, again, what I said, we want instant gratification. We want to, you know, we want to just, I want everything now. But but the good things in life don't work like that. You know, the good things in life, man, take an investment so you can get a return on your investment. And that's sustainable. Yeah. And it's like, I, I know, and I get that. I understand that. But it is also kind of contradictory. Everything's about kind of quick easy like that's just Wait, because people want to sell you stuff yeah. so they made it like that like it's not that's not actually people how it want is. That get that get rich quick schemes you buy the car yeah, it's for. instant when you buy the car but you pay for that bad for four years at least for four years that ain't instant yeah you may get it an instant but you gotta pay for that bad so the things we think are instant gratification you still you still is not I'm for in the long run I think yeah but I'm just saying and that's the way typically good things in life are like that yeah you know, so when you make decisions based on that, you get the same thing. You got to deal with those long term effects. I mean, again, it's just uh, I understand like our mindset and thinking and mantra, but it does make it hard for me to believe. I just feel like some I people raised you just, not to be selfish, man. I'm not selfish. <laughs> I raised you. I just like that you got to take people with you on a journey. I like, I, I do. That's what makes it a journey. The people who want to actually you go. Only got two more. I was like, this right. The people who want to walk. So you only got two the, the arms. People, the pe- people who want to walk. I got two arms, man, but I got a I'm voice. not carrying anybody. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what see, I'm I think, and, and, and this goes back to, you know, I know what I believe, and you know, especially in my faith, man. And, and in my faith, I believe that we make choices as human beings. You I want to walk. We're all capable of, of making good choices and bad choices, all of us. Mm-hmm. And, and some of us, we just choose to make bad choices. Like you said, we choose, you know, to make things tough for us. But I also believe there's a pool of people out there who, 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 to your point, may not know better, but just need somebody to show them how to do better, to show them how to become better, to show them that it is possible. It's like when I'm talking to these kids and they ask me questions about, man, yeah, I've been married 39 years. So you really you need to get questions or, you know, I, my kids are grown or just simple things to start a conversation. Somebody asked me today, like, yo, where you get your hair like that? You know, they was like, man, you know. So I said, oh, my whole family over there. So I showed them the picture. So now we got to a conversation about family, about, you know, mm-hmm. how, you know, how families oh, come God. together. Cause, you know, somebody asked me the other day, well, you know, because they watched the show. Oh, you and your son seem pretty close. Is that for real? Yeah, it's for real. Is that for real? Mm-hmm. Y'all do that just for the cameras? Yeah, because people, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, so what I'm having, so people are starting to see that there, there is an alternative. Now, I can't make them choose, but at least they're starting to see through our conversations that there, there are options. I don't have to be stuck like this. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like when I was talking to, to the group yesterday. You know, and I know they're not watching this. When I was talking to them yesterday, you know, because the group I, I told you I mm-hmm. talked to, that's when I told them, I said, yo, you know, how you deal with stress, you know, is, is, is not just about how you deal with stress. It's about, you talking about long-term effecting. You know, because if you're dealing with stress because you're getting hot smoking, that's why you're here now. Because something something else began to control your life. How does that relieve stress? You just relinquish control from one thing to another thing. It doesn't really feel stressed. So I say it again. You sitting there stressing because you're poor, but you keep making choices to stay poor. It makes no sense to me. You complaining because you don't have this, you don't have that, but you making the same choice you make every day to be stuck in that situation. Everybody's not going to be rich, and that's not what I'm saying, but everybody does not have to be out here trying to figure out where the next meal is going to come from. Mm. You know, there's an in-between out there that, that people can have that takes a little bit of effort. Yeah. You know, that, that it may, or, okay, it ain't going to fall on your lap. It ain't going to, somebody going to knock on your door and say, yo, here's the Some circumstances might be a little bit tougher than others, too. Like, like I what? Think, like, 
For what you mean, like what? Some I, people it was tougher. Um, I, I can certainly say with our upbringing, it was certainly different than maybe some of my peers or people that I grew up with. Okay, go ahead. And like uh, we had an option, our ability to move and go to a better school. Like I think that certainly provided us with like somewhat of a it sure did. some type of an advantage. In but sense. I didn't. I had to make do what I had. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying not everybody gets that opportunity. But you just proved my point. I didn't, so I made sure. What? Because I knew it was generational, I made sure that the ne- my next generation was going to have that opportunity. But what about all the other people? I'm, I know we had, but that, that but that's changed point. our generation. But, here. but that's my point. There's somebody that you, saying. if you think in long term and generational, then you do you, you realize that okay, I need to do better because I want better for my next generation. Yeah, I, and I think you know what where that even started at before you, your grand, your parents, and then yeah. their parents. Like it was just something that was maintained in our family. Like, I don't think not everybody has that, like, where it's just like somebody people that even think it yeah, me, pushing like, it forward. Or no, like, but, but let me say, nobody in my family was talking about, I mean, I saw my dad, he wasn't pushing, he was an entrepreneur because he was bringing extra income to them. Mm-hmm. He wasn't an entrepreneur because he wanted to work for himself. So that was something that I developed over a period of time. And, and that's different for everybody. He did give me a work ethic. He did talk to me about accountability, responsibility, and a lot of stories and sayings that I got from him. He did. But but I had to develop the next step because he couldn't give me what he didn't have. So I took what he had, but I realized, you know, that you know, there's something else out there. So I got to go get it. You know, and I think this is what I'm, I hear what you're saying. But, the foundation. But, there's, but there's still some people who do nothing to make it better for the next generation. There's some people who took a step back. Because their parents did something for them, and they're not doing it for their kids. You had a strong foundation. So I think, but it, but it comes back to one you guys said it earlier. You know, yo, I think it was you, Chris, to talk about Jim Rohn. You know, sometimes we choose to do hard, and that's what I don't understand. Is it, sometimes we? It's like, and this always get my participation trophy thing, and it's like a participation trophy. This is why I don't like it because you cannot go to practice, you cannot do anything to get better, but you still get a reward for somebody who showed up at every practice, did everything they could to get better. I got a problem with that, and I'm not saying that's the, the vein, the root of what I'm talking about. I mean, but, hey, that might but, be part but, of the problem but, too. Just, but that's my point. A guy who never comes to practice, who never does anything to get better, who is perfectly content with just showing up and being on the team and getting the shirt, you know, it's the same thing. The guy who busts his butt to get better. And I, I, what's crazy is like life kind of is moving like that right now, where you don't have to do much but just show up, you know. And then when people face or hit adversity, it's like it's catastrophic for them. But like you don't get world the same, falls apart. But like you don't get the same shatters. thing. But you don't get the same thing that people who put the effort in. Like people come to me and say, "Look, um, yo man, how do how you do that? I'm, I want to do what you're doing." And okay, fine. What do you need from me? I need you to mention me. Could you help me? Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Let me tell you my day. My day starts. I get up four thirty every morning. Well, thank you. I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up four thirty without an alarm clock. Sometimes I lay there. I pray. I get my head together. By five thirty, I'm up. I'm in the shower. I get out the shower. I get my stuff together. I come downstairs. I do my devotion. I get breakfast together for your mom and myself. You know, if Mackenzie, the three of us. You know, um. That's how I start my day. Then I get into my routine of what needs to be done. I'm checking my email. I'm checking my phone for messages. Things you know. I'm getting myself. So by the time I do get to the office destination, or if I got a workshop, something that morning, I'm going over what I got to do, what I'm going to talk about. I'm in my head. I'm thinking about it. If I got a meeting, I got to meet with the staff, or whatever. In my head, I'm playing this out, so I'm prepared. You know, and it takes that. You know, I, when I come home, I don't look at crazy stuff. Sometimes I'm in the car. I don't listen to anything. Sometimes it's perfectly quiet, and I'm getting my thoughts together. Sometimes I'm listening to motivational stuff, you know. Um, and then Washington got a bunch of good stuff out there, man. Mm-hmm. Denzel Washington, uh, right? He has a bunch of good stuff. There's a, you know, there's a bunch of people out there with some good motivational stuff that you can listen to that encourages you. You know what you got to do, different things. Sometimes I listen to gospel music. You know, I, I use that time wisely. You know, my day is planned out and I do it. You know, I don't look at crazy stuff and things. I'm focused. You know, uh, I know Monday nights I got the group of community of men. I know Tuesdays and Thursdays I got this parenting workshop I do. I know Tuesday I got this group I do in a rehab center. My, I know what my week looks like. Successful people have a routine. Yeah. Successful people don't play it by the suit. But plus, I also know my strengths and weaknesses. I know I can't sit here and look at garbage all day because garbage in, garbage out. Successful people definitely are consistent. 
But you also got to make decisions, though. And sometimes you got to give up some of the stupid, crazy stuff. that Because everything that's good to you is not good for you. I mean, listen, everybody would have a gym membership if it was this easy. No, I see. <laughs> but see, but see the, your goal out. is screwed everybody up. If your goal is, that's the problem. If your goal just, is just to work on your body, you untro- you already lost. I'm just you saying, already in lost. General, like, people would be going an extra mile and above and beyond all the time. Like, and no, you know no, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't, it's not about going extra and going beyond. It's about making appropriate sacrifices you need to do to be successful. I'm not saying for, somebody for some got people, everybody don't have to get up at 4 30 in the morning, but you don't you can't sleep till 11, 12 o'clock every day I either. Think for some people it is actually going above and beyond though. Like if doing the right thing is going to extra above them, then you get whatever you did. You, you, um, did you get what you deserve. I'm just like for instance, like it's people at my job, like it's a great opportunity. They they travel two hours to get there. Like that's above and beyond. Like most people wouldn't do that. But see, I, I don't think it's above and beyond. I hear you, but I don't think it's above and beyond. Okay. I think if it's to part of your plan, person, I mean, but see, then but see, this is what you said. Where, I think that's where, Do you want to just be average? No, that's and, the question, and, and that's the thing. Not everybody there's, if not everybody's going to be above average. Okay, we had something. We had something in the summer, and I say this it's all the time. People know me. People if you're watching, you know we know what I'm talking about. I made myself into a ball player. I grew up playing baseball, baseball, football. I didn't start playing basketball until I was like. 15, 16, because I changed changed crowds and that's what they were doing. So I made myself, you know, I taught myself how to rebound, how to play defense. I knew it was getting in the court. I was shooting when nobody was around. I was out dark. I'd be shooting. You know, I made I hard work to put myself in that position. And I kept working at it. You know, I didn't just assume, you know, same thing in baseball. Yo, when I played outfield in baseball, man, my attitude was nobody's made a ball over my head. Yeah, you had some crumbs on your team, though, like just people that wasn't. You know, there. I sure <laughs> did. There. I sure did. And you know what? Not and everybody I, on the and, team is working that hard. Yeah, that's right. And that's why they. What did you just call crumbs? That's my point. But if that, but that, if that's all you want is just to be on the team and get a uniform, I, I never had a problem with you because that was no playing time for me. Yeah. But don't get in my way. I mean, maybe that's my perspective. But my thing when is, I take this approach. Of but I try to like, help them. But I will try to help them. Like, hey, I've never been on the team, mediocre. and guys weren't good. I'll see you. I would always try to help. I would try to encourage them. You. you know, I would try to encourage them. But I can't. But my point is, I think our responsibility is to reach back. I think we all should be trying to give something back. Now, I can't make them do it. But this goes back to my thing. I'm not going to waste my time it's to, to go out for a team it, and go to all these practices and be, be okay with just sitting on the bench. That don't make sense to me. Yeah. Now, I'm not, now, you may not get in because of like a, you know, because people are just better than you, but to be satisfied with that, that's why I don't get upset when I hear when I hear pl- professional players talk about playing time and things like that. Oh, they don't go overboard. Well, mm-hmm. everybody made a big deal because um, A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts was arguing. You know what? I played with some of my best friends. I won the ball. We argued. Yeah. It wasn't no knockdown drag out, but, yo, yo, I'm open. And I thought I was open all the time. Yo, yo I'm open. And my thing was, if the football came, I'm going to catch it. Baseball, I said, I dare you to try to hit over my head. And I would run. I, I ran everything. I didn't, you know. Anybody that played out there with me knew you better call early because you don't. I'm gone, <laughs> and that's just how I played. And life, I do my life the same way, man. I think the person that sits back and wait and just contend and contend and contend, you get out of life what you put in it. And so, so to me, people who make a decision to drop out of life, you it's generational. I mean, it's, you're like, you don't know how long you got left, so how long are you gonna be miserable? Who wants to wake up every day saying I could have did better? I should have. Oh, yeah. I, I had more. I think, you know, I had an opportunity. A, talking about a specific group of people. Like I, some saying, people I think the circumstances are different. There's some people who were born rich and miserable. Yeah, but there's still people, like I said, that are okay. They're back com- up. They're but, comfortable. But, I, but yeah, they're okay. But that's but that's not. But they don't care. They're born rich. Okay, you and it's a miserable. Harder. And they're still miserable. So, but we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about some. If you're born rich and you're miserable, it's other things that feed into it. You know, and I even blame them because if you're born rich, that's more of a reason for you to go out and do something that you really want to do because you can afford to do it without getting paid. So, I, you know what I mean? You can do things, you know, people who got to work don't have the luxury of saying, I'm going to find this dream job and, and just do this. You know, um, if you're born rich and you're in a bad relationship, you can change the relationship. You know, um, poverty has its restrictions. Yeah. But my point is when you make a conscious decision to remain in poverty, that's what I have an issue with. To your point, I know some people accept it. I know some people live by it, but I still don't understand. 
I, I'm I still don't understand. Like we even, even just like I'm just thinking music wise, like we glorify that. Not we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. Like our our culture yeah. glorifies like coming from the hood or like you know, living the in the ghetto, be, coming from the bottom. Like we glorify that, and that's why it's people who they don't care about moving up out of that or leaving that. Like that's that's life. Well, I mean, but a perfect. I use this example. I was talking to somebody that who I've I've known somebody, and. Their parents did everything they could to put them in a better situation. And you see that, and, saying, and they move right back to the hood. <laughs> they move right back. That? They move right back. And I'm thinking, like, that's crazy. But so I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I don't understand. Yeah. I just don't understand how you can wake up and say I'm okay with being mediocre the rest of my life. How can you wake up and say that? I don't, I'm not even close to getting what I want out of life, but I'm okay. You know why? Because they don't think they're mediocre. Mm. <laughs> like, some, people, yeah, yeah. some people take it as they're trying their hardest. Yeah, like, you know? yeah, they don't think that that's mediocre. I'm glad y'all defended me, people, because I'm, I'm, I'm just proud saying. Of y'all for I mean, listen, but, but there's I, people who know they're mediocre. Like, again, and I know he's not watching. So we go to the store today. So he's, oh, we, we, you know, um, we need to get snacks because we're supposed to have this thing. So, you know, what, snacks. And I get reimbursed for it. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, you saying we because you know I'm going to do it. <laughs> And then we get to the store and he says, um, you know, um, yo, man, could you, you know, because I got a Mountain Dew. Because I don't use your Mountain Dew, but I was a little tired today. So I got a Mountain Dew. He says, well, you know, so I saw him grab the soda. He says, yo, um, can you can you pay for this? And I, I left my wallet in the car. Come on, man. You know you ain't going to give me this money mm-hmm. back, bro. Thank so you, my, sir. Thing, mm-hmm. my thing is, as a grown man, how are you okay with that? What? Like just... How are you okay with just asking? You know, you don't know really know me, but the assumption is, but you're okay with that. I wouldn't be okay with with somebody just 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 asking somebody for something. I wouldn't be okay with that. That's like prom, perfect of what we're talking about today. I wouldn't be. Where it's like you're not okay with that. I get that. I wouldn't and be okay with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. can, can I get some chips, Ted? Not everybody. But I can see that. But I think yeah, but I just think see I, I think every every see this is what I say. Everybody's born with, with talents and gifts. Everybody's born with potential. You know, the question is how do we how do we you know what do we do with it? How do we nurture it? Um do we surround ourselves with people that can help us develop it and bring it out? Or do we just settle on mediocrity and say it is what it is? You know, mm-hmm. but I, I just don't. And again, I'm not disagree with anything either you said. I just have a hard time understanding how people just settle into that role and say, "Okay, I'm okay with being broke. I'm okay with always complaining. I'm okay with always asking Devin or Chris to do something for me." I don't understand that. It's just easy for them to do what's comfortable. But that's my point. How, why is that easy? I would be so uncomfortable with every time I wanted somebody to have somebody else. I'm grown. Like, Especially when you tell me I'm a grown behind man, when, or, you, when you're right. saying stuff like that. They're used to doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they get accustomed. Right. It's like getting like, a yes. Yeah, they they used to so doing that. Like, oh, all right, well, I'm going to ask. I'm used to getting a handle. I'm used to doing that. So, like, why do I feel like I need to work hard? It's like Jay-Z was talking about, uh, you know, his family members asking him for money. It's like that one time you say yes, I mean, this makes it a little easier to keep asking the next time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not again. I'm not disagreeing with anything you got. I just, I'm just saying to myself. I just think it's crazy that 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 people settle into the role of some boss is going to take care of me. Some boss owes me something. Um, you know, I don't even put forth the effort. My assumption is, you know, that is what I don't understand. Yeah, I just feel like at this point, like I don't even. I'm, I'm not shocked by it anymore. Like I'm know, not shocked. I'm, I'm great. Expected. I'm greatly disappointed. And somebody said, they said, you know, you, you got to keep trying to, it's funny because most people say you got to stop trying to help people. But I was talking to a friend of mine today and he said, I've known him for a long time. He said, you know, yeah, but you can't give up on trying to help. No, nah, and I, I think that's probably the other side of it. It's yeah, not where I like, don't, I don't want to help people. But like to a point Devin said, it's like, I can't want to help you more than you want to help yourself. Like you but gotta show like I agree, but it's yeah. not about it's is my mindset is maybe I can introduce somebody to something they just don't they, they're not familiar with. My thing is maybe I can spark somebody to say, okay, there is more to this. I can yeah. achieve more to this. You know, maybe I, you can say, you know, um, hey, that you know what? Like for instance, when 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 the guy was telling me about I didn't understand about his mom, I said, No, let me explain to you what I did for my dad. 
getting up in the morning, washing them baby getting. I was never late for work. I never let that interfere with me. You know, I wouldn't, you know, and I'm saying, you know, dude, you ain't got to be here at 1030. So you really don't have an excuse. <laughs> but I do understand. So what I'm saying is I think my issues with people out there who we ready to use excuses, but we just, we don't like our lives because, you know, because we complain about it, but we settle there. We said, it's like the guy who tells you, I hate my job, but you've been going there for 20 years, dude. You never filled out another job application, you never tried to do anything different. Why are you complaining? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people out there like that. And I, but it goes, but yeah, but it goes back to what I said. We got food now, and I think it's different. I think, I think this part is different. I think there's more people dropping our life now than it was five, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I think there is more people just saying, I give up now. Because just life feels like it's daunting at the moment. Like I said, it's between. It is, but who said it wasn't supposed to be? And like, it, you're not getting no pay increase like you feel like you want to do. But there's no inflation. But yeah, people want to tell you how to live. Is going, yeah. It's okay, like, so why haven't you quit? Because I like nice things. And mm-hmm. I actually, but I, even I, before you so, got the nice thing, we talked know, about this last listen, week. We talked, I'm, I'm when you pers- work two jobs. I'm pursuing something else. So like, you no, know, but even when you, when, no, before time, this, even when you work two jobs, when you were doing everything you had to do, you could have quit. You could have just said, you know what? Hey, I'm going to sit right here at this station in life. I'm, you know, It ain't what I wanted, but I'm going to be okay. That's us. Again, I'm different mentality. Like I, I knew I wanted more. I, look who I was raised by. Like who was talking about? Like, <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> who I was raised by. Why do you think? You I, need to clarify that statement. I mean, like oh, look the who, same look thing. Who I'm I, sitting next like, to. The same thing I just said. Where um, should I like, take that as an insult? No, where <laughs> my grandfather, your father, like kind of laid this foundation look, for you. He showed you like that he was an it's entrepreneur terrible. and work ethic. Same thing here. Like you, I seen you as an entrepreneur. I seen your work ethic, and I seen like you really kind of push and pursue and like break through. And I, but I could not know, imagine. I can do those same things. I could not imagine not providing for my wife and not providing for you and your mom. Now she tell. I ask her every day, "What can I do for you?" I like nice things. I like to take every trips. day. I, like I ask your mom too. every day. I ask her, "What can I do for you today?" Every day I ask her. You know, I can imagine being in a position where I couldn't. Because I remember when it was tough, when we first started out, we were broke, busting, and disgusting. I remember those days. Dating today, you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You're going to need it. You might need two, three jobs. No, that's not you, true. I mean, no, this might, see, need, this might need to be another episode. But no, but, but, I, but even yeah, then, but no, that's because you didn't set the expectation. Huh? You got to set the expectation. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm not Man. talking about me. No, I'm just saying. I'm people, saying when I hear people say general. that, you set the expectation. Like, yeah, it's... You, the internet's the wild, wild west. You need to come, <laughs> you need to come <laughs> take a look. They don't, no, I don't. They, they don't, don't want to go to Cheesecake I don't. Factory. I don't. They, they well, don't see, that, that's the like but you know, things that but, they wouldn't do in the first But you day. know what? And that's fine. Guess what? Then, you're not my, then you're not my type. <laughs> you're not my type. Because if I don't know, I'm trying to get to know you. It's not coffee and, and, dates. Don't this do is those. a whole nother <laughs> show. Park, but and this, this is a whole nother show. When I tell people say money is the number one reason why people, why relationships break up. I disagree. I don't think it's money. I think it's people's attitude towards money. Yeah. I think because if if my budget only allows me to go to the cheesesteak factory, but you got a roof over your head, you got clothes on your back, you got those things, that's okay. We can work to go to, to go to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. That can be a part of our plan. But if that's what you're hinging I, on, then yes. it's not me you after. You after what I can do for you. I'm, oof, and that's the difference. I don't need to be with somebody that's for what I can do for you. Yeah, I can do my grandma's. I can do bad by myself. Hey. I can spend money. I can spoil you myself. Listen. You are preaching right now. So I'm, I'm just saying. saying. And I, I wish, you know, the masses can hear that. Man, we got a minute to go. <laughs> <laughs> we got a minute to go, man. <laughs> you no, know. I'm, just, I'm serious. Like, that too. That might be to be another episode, too. Like, I'm telling you, like, this this first date thing is getting out of control. Right? And that's why life is hard, too. <laughs> no, like I said, inflation is certainly a thing. The government, uh, like, that's it's been and you keep, okay. politics. We're going to be going on because it's like partner, people, it just, all, it, 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 the battle of the sexes, it's just like so many different things that I feel like, depending upon which level you are, because not everybody cares about the, the war and government and politics mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But there are people like that's Part of their lives. So, so what about what them. about control? You can control. Like, ah, huh? What about control? You can control and pray about everything else. Well, I'm not going to get stressed. I'm not at the point in my life now where I don't get stressed about things I can't control. I don't. I I, I don't. Um, I work hard at it. I may once in a while get a little off it, but I, there's certain things I can't control, and I understand that now. Mm. So, me getting stressed is not going to change it. Me getting stressed is only going to do two things: it's going to affect my health and affect the color of my hair. 
That's it. it. It's not going to make the situation any better. And I'm learning that. It took me a long time to learn it. I'll be 62 in what? A week and a half? Yeah. You know, based on, 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 on the world standards, yo, I got what? 23 years left? Hmm. So I'm just saying, you know, how much of your life are you going to waste just coming up short and being okay with it? You know that I don't. I don't. And and I everything you guys say that I, I agree with two hundred fifty percent. I still don't understand. <laughs> I still don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, so I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying no, I don't understand. No, and I I, I think kind of you know a lot of the conversation even for us is just playing devil's advocate because we understand we're. I don't all, like that term devil's advocate. You know what uh, I mean? You uh, don't don't that. bring the devil in this house. Um, That's right. <laughs> I mean, many his name in this house. This is a God fearing house. <laughs> No, we don't play both sides. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Just like I saw your joke today too. What joke? When I said Mackenzie could be me, <laughs> I just didn't respond. Said, <laughs> when I said Mackenzie could be me for the fall <laughs> festival, what? I said all you use a Nat Turner. No, I said all you use is some glasses and a Bible. In the Bible, he could show up as dad. And my grandson will be perfectly happy with that. <laughs> Brightest day, <They're> like his <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> He ain't worried about that. <laughs> a little Bible with him. <laughs> Bible warrior. Every day. Oh, it was funny. It was when, when he, the, the Sunday he came to church with us. Mm-hmm. When I was speaking and he came. And so Nicole went to say something. He took shh, grandpa speaking. <laughs> my dude. My dude. <laughs> she went to ask him something doing the church. He was like, shh. She did not like that. I knew she was like that. My dude. Okay. Clean him up in the way that she go. No, oh, man. See, maybe he shouldn't wear that costume. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the costume. I'm, I'm getting him ready for life. Oh man! Speak positive things. Speak abundance things into your life, man. You know, speak prosperity. Right, not, let's not, talk. Not, not. about to go into the next <laughs> sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am not going to apologize for what I believe. Every day I'm already saying. I know you're not, but I say this, and I say this. Somebody said this to me today. He said, "You know, um, it's two things you always talk about. We talking." Your wife and God. And I do. I, and, 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 <laughs> why is that funny? And he cracked up. Why is that funny? Because it's true. Family. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, God, I said, it's two things you always talk about. Your wife and God. And yeah, and it is. Because you know why? I'm, I'm proud of them both. And they both, first of all, my wife is from God. It's a gift from God. That, that God gave. And I truly understand that. And everything She's I have. Watching. Everything I have, everything that you experience is because of my faith in God. Yeah. That stuff we had wouldn't have been if it wasn't for what mm-hmm. I believe in. You know, it trickle down effect. Yo, so, no, so I, when, still, listen, I know I'm you know what I'm saying. Faith. So when people I'm say, like, look, faith. man. And that goes back to what I'm saying. When life gets tough, you got to have something to hold on to, man. And if all you hold them to yourself, you in trouble. I think You in trouble. I think that is, like, kind of a key element and point to, like, Wanting and inspiring for more, you know what I mean. And it has to be something I feel like greater than yourself. I'm ready. Like to something go down. being <laughs> being purpose driven. You know what I mean. Like something greater and larger than yourself. Like is what pers- pushes people. Like when, think about when you hear all the athletes or rappers and when yeah. they, they share and tell their stories. It was it wasn't it was about getting them and family members out of the place of predicament they were in. It was bigger than just. I'm just trying to get this money. Like, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. when you see people who generally do it for that, they don't really have long lasting success. Like same thing professional sports wise. Like the I mean, Deion Sanders said this a while ago, like when he recruits yeah. certain players mm-hmm. in certain positions, yeah. like he definitely does it based upon like just family upbringing. Like they're hungry. Right, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, yeah, deep. They got in trouble for that. I know, but you know, but it's <laughs> but to, uh, a big player got to be single mom. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Defensive lineman, like, yo, because they, they hungry. Like, they, they know. That's not always true. It's not. <laughs> but but not in a lot of cases, you just got to be doing something for bigger than yourself. Like, be no, I do agree. But I give you the perfect example. I know we, we got to close. My Mondays on the Community Men, we talked about this, and I think everybody didn't quite get it when I said, um, along with your vision, you also got to have a blueprint for life. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have a way to get to that vision. I just can't say. I want to be a better husband, but I do nothing to be a better husband. I can't say I want to be successful, but I don't have a plan to become successful. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? not doing yeah. anything. And I think that's part of the problem why people give up on life because yes. even when they have these dreams, they have a blueprint to get there. And if you go back in 1967, I think it was Martin Luther King gave a speech right here in Philadelphia in school. He was talking to school kids, but he said that it was called the blueprint of life. 
you know, yo, there's things you gotta have. You gotta, you need a blueprint. In life. I just reposted that. You today. can't sit back and say, "I want to be this," but have no plan to get there. Mm. You know, and and that's what kind of drew me to Kobe Bryant because you know when he died, they started releasing all this stuff. Yo, that's all he talked about was his plan. Yeah, he didn't just wake up one day and say, "Okay, I'm gonna be a great I'm basketball, basketball player," and just wait until it happened. On the court, yeah. right. no. He had a strategy, man. He, you know, he he was. When he was, he had access because of his dad, but he was going to locker room in high school. He Being was talking to different people. people. He was hungrier than his dad was. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, he did all the stuff he needed to do, man. But it wasn't just a vision. It was how do I get there step by step? Yeah. What happens if I get knocked off and come back? You know, and he got knocked off. So I'm saying we need to understand that, man. And to me, I will never understand why people just quit. And I say this, if you have a blueprint, it's hard to quit because you refer him back to the map. You're going back to, you know, I think back to all the time when, when when people tell me no, when I realized that somebody told me when I first got started that if 10 people tell you no and one, per, one person tell you yes, it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. It's worth, because that yes is the beginning of getting started. So so I think back to those lean days. You know, I just, Ted Josie and I just got the other day, my mentor. You know, I go back to those days when he helped me to get started. Yeah. You know, and I remember those days, and and I think we have to do more of that. But you know, because those that, that should produce a hunger and a thirst for us to do better than want to be better. Like I know you talk about your early days when you had the temp job and you was working on double four twenty two and crazy the part time job at the gas working station. At the gas station working but that fueled you to be better. Selling clothes at the outlets, all of that. So we wait past the time. Yeah, right? yeah. But I, I, I mean, I think a couple of key things again that you said was like one passion, purpose. Like uh, doing something bigger than yourself, like you said, having us and mom and like seeing that as something to help you kind of keep you motivated and keep pushing the stone through some of those difficult times. Um, another thing too, being around like-minded people, yeah, or like people that can actually elevate you, like are, are going to push you to kind of get out of your yeah. comfort zone and do some different. But, things. but I also say this: if your if your dream is not bigger than you. And it's something that you can accomplish on your own. You're not really dreaming. Yeah. And then like having a roadmap. You're not really dreaming. And a blueprint. I think that's a blueprint, man. And like knowing sometimes it's not going to be a straight shot. Like you're going to have to pivot occasionally. And like, yeah, you might have to take a couple mm-hmm. steps back to take several steps forward. Like it's just everybody's journey and race is different here. And, you know, hopefully this show like definitely motivated and inspired people to kind of think differently about how we approach life, you know? And I, I know there's still some things that we don't understand, <laughs> but hopefully, you know, we encourage. Keep hope yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah <laughs> keep, keep the hope alive. <laughs> so another another great episode, Above Average Black Man. You know, we hope that we inspire and empower and uplift the community tonight. Like, that, comment, subscribe, share, comment, and interact with us. Yes. Above Average Black Man is A Square DM. Yeah, it is Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Podbean. I heard radio. Yep, I was waiting for you to hit them all. Look at you. I did it. I did it. No, we I did it. I should because I gotta say that. Yeah. Well, it's been another great show, man. Love and appreciate you, dudes, man. And until next week. Yeah. Same time, same bat channel. Peace out, everybody.